This video is brought to you by NordPass. More about them later in the video. Petronas Towers is arguably one of the most iconic buildings at the heart of Kuala Lumpur, towering at 460 meters, with a unique sky deck at 170 meters above street level. It's iconic, not just because of its shape and sky deck, but also the fact that it's been featured in many films and videos. And between 1998 and 2004, it was the tallest building in the world. It has since been dwarfed by many other buildings, such as the Burj Khalifa, or many others in the heart of New York. The engineering that goes into these type of buildings is vast and it takes a lot of time for people to find the right structural framing. So it's beholden us as structural engineers to study these buildings so that we can design our buildings faster and leading to better designs. So let's go into detail about the structural framing behind the Petronas Towers. Let's first give props to the engineers behind the building of this tower. And this is Thornton and Tomasetti who came up with a design that allowed this structure to be both safe and comfortable to live in. So what is the structural framing? Well, the primary structural system is a tube in tube system. So it's got the central core as normal structures, but it's also got the ring of columns around the outside that are utilized to making sure that you've got the biggest leverage of that structural stability. Being in Kuala Lumpur, it's subject to high wind loads, but means it also needs to be quite stiff to make sure it doesn't shake around in the breeze too much. And this is where bringing the load to the outer edge of the core, so the outer tube, really gives you that bigger leverage that you need. A lot of time, a tube and tube system is connected either through diaphragms that will allow the coupling to occur or outriggers on certain floors. But the problem with outriggers a lot of the time, it attracts too much load as the columns on the outer side shorten, meaning that you get a differential between the central core that is less lightly stressed than the outer columns. To overcome some of these issues, they came up with a unique system of a Virendil outrigger system, meaning that you've got a flexible outrigger allowing you to adjust for some of those movements and not have that incompatibility but still have the additional stiffness that you need. So there's a number of outriggers on certain floors that allow this tower to be as stiff as it needs to be. If you don't really know what an outrigger system is, it's essentially, it's a stiff section in the building that allows the load from the central core as it's bending over to come into the outer edges. The easiest way to describe this is a skier skiing down a mountain. See, when they're skiing down the mountain, they've got their central legs. That is the central core. So there's a little lever arm there that they don't have so much stability on. But then they have their stocks, allowing them to leverage out further, giving them more stability. This is essentially the same thing that an outrigger system does. So as the tower comes up, it curves over, but on the levels that you have the outrigger, it helps push the tower back. So the building goes over and curves. So it forms an S type shape of the building. And the number of outriggers is really based on the height of the building and how many floors that you have available to you. It's typically you don't want to have these on normal floors as they can be quite deep and intrusive to certain areas. So typically you try and limit them to service type conditions or floors that have unique framing. And even sometimes you might try and frame them up such that they don't impact the structure very much and alternating sides to making sure that you get the overall stability of the building correct. To help increase the load transfer through these outrigger floors, they have a ring beam around the outside to making sure that you're engaging all the columns. It's like a belt truss around the outer edge of the building. It just allows you to specifically stiffen up that location and transfer the load to all the columns. The more stiffness you bring to the outside, the stiffer it is the transfer on those outrigger floors. So this outer ring beam or belt truss helps transfer the load from the inner core to the outer core. We can see this through many diagrams that we display on the screen. So this is a really unique feature of allowing you to stiffen up the structure through this fear and deal action and still have a lot of space to move through it. As opposed to a traditional outrigger, which is normally a solid wall. This solid wall doesn't allow for much access through the building and sometimes limited access to certain parts. So this is a really unique feature that helps you have both the stiffness of an outrigger floor, but also the flexibility that you need to be compatible for gravity loads. So that core is a 25 by 25 meter central section with outer ring of columns around the outer edge of the building. With this outriggers on certain floors, means that you have a lot of stiffness in the structure, bringing it to the outer perimeter of the building. As we're saying, normally on these tall buildings, they're normally not governed by earthquake, as they're normally quite flexible, and means that they can overcome some of the dissipation of forces through their height and flexibility. But being where it's located, wind is one of the primary actions that it needs to reduce. To overcome some of the wind forces, you can just monster it in by having a really strong core and outer ring, but you can also try and shape the building such that you reduce the forces and vortexes and the effect of the wind. They do this a number of ways. So they step it in as they go up, just disrupt some of those wind forces. So, and you can see the outer shape of it as well is uniquely shaped 
to help reduce the impact of the wind on the building. Now, by shaping the building, you can have significant impacts in reducing the wind. There's many other examples like this, such as Taipei 101, or even the Burj Khalifa, where they've specifically shaped the building to reduce those vortexes and reduce the wind load. This is some of the things that they've actually implemented on Petronas Towers as well. But that's just looking at the upper extent of the building and the engineering behind it and how the stability of the structure actually works. But we also have a lot of structure below the ground that we don't see. You see, quite often, the engineering behind the underneath is often overlooked and missed as it's not visibly on display. So to support the tower's massive weight on the ground, there's over 104 piles that go deep into the ground to anchor it into the ground to stop both those lateral actions and the vertical loads as we don't want this building sinking into the ground. So it can be quite a lot of money and time gone into the stability and lateral system of the foundations to make sure they're both safe in the short and long term. See, foundations are more than just what load and bearing load it needs to be on there. The ground is quite soft and can move over time. So it's more of a serviceability state that you need to design for. So how much settlement are you going to get from the structure from that system? This is where the foundations are more governed by a serviceability state about how much it deflects than the ultimate capacity and bearing on the ground. As you will have a potentially ultimate capacity, but over time, as the ground is constantly loading onto it, you're normally more governed by the service state than the ultimate state. And sometimes if you are governed by the short term actions, you can use a high capacity for such things as wind load as there's a dynamic action similar to what you have in concrete. So you potentially will have a higher bearing capacity for those instantaneous loads, where normally your foundations are normally governed more so by those service conditions and the long-term actions applied to the foundations. Thank you NordPass for sponsoring this video. So what is NordPass? NordPass is an online business management system to protect both your passwords, sensitive data, and payment information. But NordPass is more than just that. It has an online breach detection system. See, they're constantly monitoring the webs 24 seven and one of the leading breach detection systems out there. So as soon as your data has been leaked, they're able to jump onto it so you can make the changes to make sure you're securing your content. The benefits of NordPass is the fact that it's actually specifically built for businesses. So it means that you can easily share or revoke access to employees as they move in and out of your organization. Or if you need to share some of the most important data like payment information, they have a secure way they can share that payment information so people can purchase the software or products that they need in a timely manner. Most of the time, you need a whole IT department behind you to try and control these things. But NordPass gives these abilities at your fingertips. In addition to this, they also have an easy way you can generate more secure passwords as they have a password generating system, meaning that you just don't need to rely on someone else's memory or passphrases, which we know is insecure. To help encourage everyone to use NordPass and see the true benefits of using such systems, NordPass is offering a three month free trial for anyone who uses the link in the below description along with the code. So what have you got to lose? So start using this password manager risk-free for three months and see whether you actually fits your business. Now let's get back to the video. But we're just talking about the primary structure so far. How about the sky deck, which is arguably one of the most iconic features of this building? Would you be surprised to know that there's actually no real direct connection there? Of course, there is some point where it catches, but both the sides of the tower are allowed to slide. As when the building moves in the wind, they can move in different directions. So what you don't want to do is the building pulling the structure apart. So that what they've allowed for is a sliding joint on the 41st and 42nd floor. So the building can essentially move apart from each other and can have as much as 250 millimeters of movement before you actually have a problem. Now, 250 millimeters of movement, you might think that's quite a lot, but for the height of the towers, it's not actually that much. So the towers have to be quite tuned, specifically stiffened to make sure that they don't move too far apart. So there's a lot of engineering that's gone into design, how much movement you're allowing for it, and how do you catch it in the worst case situation? The sky decks are more than just a feature and an aspect to access from one tower to the other. They're also acting as an emergency exit. Sometimes if you can't access from one tower, the sky deck has been specifically designed to be a safe point where you can access from one side to the other. So if you ever need to evacuate for whatever reason, such as a fire, but you can't get out of the side that you're on, you can use the sky deck to access the other tower and safely exit the building. So there's a lot of safety that needs to go into it to make sure that tower is both safe in an emergency situation, as it can be that life raft allowing you to access from one tower to the other. Quite a lot of unique features in this engineering feat that had to go in to make sure that it was both safe and comfortable to use. If you want to learn more about other buildings and some of the engineering behind it, I'll link to a video here about some of the tallest buildings in New York. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, well, I've got something unique to offer. So offering a range of different products that you can see 
linked in the below description. So I've just got one of the hoodies here where you've got learn, share, grow. Making sure that we're always constantly learning as engineers and sharing it with our local community. And on the back, you can see that as engineers, sometimes we're not the best spell. It's just something that we need to work on. I can't also go past thanking all my YouTube and Patreon members. Without your support, this type of content would not be possible. Keep learning, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.